Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. My name is Chris and as suggested by the video title, today we this is an update video along with an experimentation that we are doing. Alrighty, now uh, this is a very important video. So let's get straight to the experimentation part. Uh, when the latest update came out, the 0 0.23.5, I did mention a long time ago, this was like a couple of months ago, that I had an idea that would utilize the asteroids. Well, we are going to test out that idea. Now, I did hint out what the idea was as a design, and I mentioned it was, well, it's a word and it starts with the letter S. No one really guessed what it was. No one even tried guessing. <laughs> No one's interested, but well, the uh, plan was to make a submarine uh, because as you may know, these asteroids sink underwater. So I figured why don't I attach, uh, why don't I attach like a rocket part to an asteroid and there you go, submarine. Well, let's see if that works. Uh, yeah, we're going to see if that works in this episode. We're going to test out dif different sized asteroids and uh, along while that's happening in the background, I'm pre-recording, you may have noticed. We will be talking about future plans, current goals, yada, yada, yada. So let's start off with, uh, how do I start this? I didn't really exactly plan this video. I'm just, I'm just saying stuff. All right. Well, I had a subscriber that suggested like several months back, maybe like four or five months ago to, for me to play a game known as War of Thunder. I did play that game. War of Thunder is basically a game that allows you to fly, I think it was World War II aircraft. So it's interesting. So, you know, when, when I first looked it up, I thought, wow, this is cool. And you have this multiplayer, really cool multiplayer. So I checked it out. And I think it was, it was around 7 gigabytes in size, the actual game, which freaked me out. I think it's around that size when you get it off of Steam. So, yeah, it's free as well, so that's good. I got it, started playing it, and it was pretty good, I had a bit of fun. I did all the uh, tutorials because I was pretty bad at the multiplayer. I went straight for multiplayer at the beginning. I did terribly, so that's why I did tutorials. And then I went straight to the multiplayer again after I finished all the tutorials. I struggled, and I, I earned enough. I forget what the point system was. I think it must be by kills or something. But I got enough points to get an upgrade. I got an upgrade and I thought, wait, where's where's the change? Because I think I bought a new engine of whatever aircraft I was using. I don't remember. In fact, it, I don't think I even bothered trying to remember. But yeah, I got the upgrade and I didn't enjoy it. I didn't actually like the game after that. And I'll tell you why. I'm so used to things like KSP where you get to make your own craft and then fly it. With War of Thunder... You can upgrade your things, but it's not like the, the physical appearance of the craft will change. You need to get an entirely different aircraft in order to have a different appearance. So, after long hours and not really being good at the game, <laughs> I gave up and I uninstalled it. So that's that's history of War of, War of Thunder. How fun. And that, let's also talk about... Uh, what was the game called? I forget. Oh yeah, Space Engineers. How could I forget the name? Space Engineers. All right. Now, that game, I, I got really sick of it quick. Don't get me wrong. I got sick of it really quick. At the moment, they've been updating the game. The developers have gone insane, as in like in a good way. They've been implementing so many things. Um, I haven't kept track of any. Haven't kept track of anything at all. So. And the thing about Space Engineers is that there are many people playing that game, and I find it pointless if I join in and start playing it. You know why? Why would you watch my videos when someone else has already has already got some good content? So I figured, well, let's stop playing Space Engineers. Maybe once in a while, I'll do a design, something like that. Cool, but we'll sort of lay off that a little bit. Uh, video content has been at an all-time low as of late. Uh, I've had a lot of tests, assignments, and all that. It's like one assignment after the other at school, so it's ridiculous. Anyway, aside from that, let's talk about the future. So I've been looking up a game that I might be interested in. Uh, I've been looking up several games, 
And as you may know, the, the channel, I want this channel to be like a space related channel. So I looked up space games and I found one that really caught my attention. It's known as Limit Theory. It's not out yet. Uh, it will be out around mid this year, maybe July, August, around mid this year. And it looks like a really good space game. Uh, I advise you to check it out. It's called Limit Theory. It's still in development. Apparently there's one guy making it, which is bad if you think about one guy making a game because, well, you know, you won't really be able to pick up on all your mistakes. Sometimes someone else might be able to pick up on your mistakes. Things like that. Uh, but the game does look good. Uh, really s pretty stuff in space. Game-wise, man, all these space games, it's crazy. It, like, all these space games that have asteroids utilize mining. It's like always mining. Oh, well, I guess that's a common trend. It makes sense to have mining when you have asteroids. Uh, KSP, KSP will get into that pretty soon. I think by the end of this year, KSP will have mining implemented. So, really cool stuff. So that's that. I was thinking about playing Limit Theory when it comes out. I will do a test run. See if you guys like it. If you guys like it, I'll continue. Of course, I'll always do KSP on my channel. Because that's what the channel is all about. It's KSP type channel. <laughs> uh, because, yeah, it's KSP. KSP is KSP. Another problem is multiplayer. I'm thinking about the future with KSP multiplayer. I'm trying to figure out who I'll get to play with eventually. And unfortunately, I don't know any YouTuber that is Australian. Uh, because most are in America or Canada. And, well, the, the time difference from there to Australia, which is where I live, is a little bit different. Um, I'd, be have, I'd have to play at like midnight, past midnight, and I don't really want to do that. So I'd have to find someone who's Australian, or maybe on a rare occasion I could play with an American, or something like that. Uh, it'd have to be on the weekend, maybe on like a Friday or Saturday, something like that. Anyway, that's a lot of future planning. I am looking forward to multiplayer. I'm, if I do get invited to multiplayer servers, I will troll the heck out of people. I promise you. I will do crazy stuff. I like trolling videos and I'm, I'm the type of trolling type guy. Anyway, let's get back onto this video. Let's check the experimentation phase. As you can see, the asteroid is indeed pulling this thing underwater. But, let me remind you, this is the biggest asteroid you can find in the game. Or well, one of the biggest, I think. Um, it might be a C-class. I don't remember the size difference. I need to compare again so I can remember. Anyway, it's a big asteroid. It's really impractical for a submarine-type design. Really, imagine moving like an E-class asteroid underwater. That's ridiculous. No. Like, no. A waste of fuel? Pointless. So, at this point, I'm thinking... And the very reason why I have that design attached to the asteroid is because I have an idea to have uh, like a missile silo. Because a missile silo, as you may know, is a, is a stationary type thing. And that's what we want. We don't, it's so wasteful having to move like a huge asteroid like this to be a stun marine. So I figured, all right, why don't we make something that's stationary, a cool missile silo, underwater, undetectable, kind of. Hard to see, yeah, kind of hard to see. Actually, it is hard to see, think about it. Uh, if you are too far away from it, the asteroid would just disappear because of the, the rendering distance thing. Yeah. So cool stuff. Cool stuff. But no, so far, this plan just failed my experiment. It was a good experiment. You know, we learned a couple things. Uh, but there we go. I think it's hit the bottom of the ocean. And there it is. <laughs> and let me tell you, it's some weird stuff going on. Very weird stuff on, with the parts. Underwater parts. So right now I'm just trying to uh, get the staging correct. Mm -hmm. Trying to organize the staging. I don't want to mess this up. And I've, I do p believe I pressed F5 to save and look at that. I believe I just pressed spacebar to decouple the, the missile, which is the solid fuel booster. And that just exploded. And from what I understand, I could be wrong, but... If if a if a rocket or something like that is underwater, it's considered as if it is inside the Earth, like inside a already inside an object. It's hard. I don't. I don't. I struggle to explain it. I'm sorry, but anyway, every time I reloaded, I, I pressed F9, 
it just kept on smashing and I believe the error was something along the lines of uh, being inside an object. I forget exactly what it said because I did this like a month ago. <laughs> yes, I know. I did this a month ago. The reason why I haven't uploaded too many videos, you know, assignments, but also internet. Yeah, and look at those errors. Collided into the surface. Yes. So it's considering, it's calling the the ocean as a surface in a way, as a physical object. Um, I don't understand it. Anyway, guys, I do hope you enjoyed. Give me a few, some feedback on the games, future stuff. And uh, yeah, see you next time. What a failed experiment. No. Oh, well, only if it worked. <laughs> Take care.